kids. They destroy everything in the routine process of fixing things, and refinishing things, and then fixing them again, and then refinishing them again. Today, it's long overdue to refinish this table. And I'm going to show you how. They bang on things, and they color on things with markers and nail polish. <sighs> Let's get to work. First, what I'm going to do is when I originally built this table for my wife and I before we had kids, I didn't fill the cracks in this table with any wood filler because we kind of liked that rustic look. But after our first kid turned about a year old, we decided, you know what, we got to fill this thing. And at the time, I didn't have the best solution for wood filler. And now, maybe four years later, I found a really good solution. This is a polyurethane mix that expands and contracts with the seasonal movement of the wood. Prior to this, I was just using a Bondo type finish that just got way too hard. And whenever my table moved in winter or in summer, the wood filler would just crack. So a lot of it had already fallen out and also have been wanting to replace it all with a proper wood filler. So here I'm using this filler and I'm going around the entire table filling any chunks that are missing. I dug out a lot of it and now I'm going in and filling all the cracks that have fallen apart. I've been really wanting to do this mostly because after when our first kid was born, I kept finding Cheerios in the cracks and snacks and Cheez-Its and Fruit Loops and just got tired of digging all that crud out of there. So I said, you know what, it's time that I do it. And also the table, it's been a year and a half or so since I've refinished this thing and it was long overdue. And in this video, I want to show you exactly the best way to refinish a table because if you have a table that's finished with polyurethane or a lacquer or some kind of film varnish, then it's going to be a little bit harder to do. So I'm going to show you the best finish to use for touch up. And I use this finish on all my tables in my company for all of my clients and everyone loves it. If you have a piece of furniture that gets a lot of traffic, this finish is great for it because your traditional varnish, if you throw your keys on there, you slide mugs around, you can get scratches very easy. Also, it's not easy to fix. You have to sand everything off the table, get all that goo off of there, all that film off of there, and then start from scratch with your spray gun or your paint roller and go to town with a stinky, smelly product. What I'm using here doesn't have any fumes. It's very easy to use inside of the house, no problem. So let's get to it. What are we doing here? We're now sanding off that wood filler that I had put in. It takes about 15 minutes or so to dry and it just sands off like dust very easy. I'm sanding inside my house as you can see. I just have my Mirka Daros 5 inch sander connected to a traditional rigid shop vac and it's sucking up all the dust so I'm not getting any dust in my house and there's no smell coming from whatever was previously put on there and so I'm just going to go back and forth with an 80 grit piece of sandpaper because what I wanted to do here was make sure that I started from scratch. I wanted to get the color off because my wife and I decided we're going to put a new color on and so we're going to get all that wood filler sanded off, get all the finish sanded off and make sure we start with a clean piece of wood. And you can see it maybe took me about 20 minutes to do this. 80 grit piece of sandpaper back and forth until all the finish was off. And then I switched over to 180 grit sandpaper which is recommended for the finish company of what your wood should be prepped to before applying finish. Now I'm going to be cleaning and conditioning the surface of this wood. Even though I had my vacuum sucking while I was sanding, you're going to see here how much dust is still inside the fibers of the wood. You want to make sure you have a nice clean wood that there's no sawdust stuck in the fibers that are left on the surface. So Rubio Monaco, which is the finish I will also be using, surprise, makes a cleaner conditioner for the table. This stuff statically charges the wood so that it helps you pick up all those fine particles of sawdust that are trapped inside of the table. So I'm just going to go and take my time, get this thing nice and damp, wipe back and forth, get all of that dust that I can out of there. And I want to make sure I'm cleaning this well because when I apply finish, I want my finish to adhere to the wood itself, not to that dust that's trapped there. Because when you're finishing, 
you could be applying finish to sawdust and not to wood and then it leaves you with a rougher surface it's not actually bonding and penetrating as it should so it's a good tip to just make sure you go and clean your table well before applying any stain or finish here you see how much sawdust i collected even though the vacuum was on as we're waiting for the cleaner to dry it just takes a couple minutes but i figured i'd dance for you guys what do you think now we're ready to apply our finish with Rubio Monocoats Oil Plus 2C. It's a very simple process, but I wanted to walk you guys through it. You take part A, which is the finish itself, and it can be pigmented, which is really cool because you can get a clear coat with this, you can get color, you can get whites, you can get grays, you can get browns, all inside of your finish, so you don't even have to stain beforehand. So what you're gonna do is mix this three to one, three parts of A and one part of B. B is just an accelerator. It's not a hardener like you get in your traditional finish. So it isn't absolutely necessary. It's just gonna help your finish cure faster so you can use your table sooner. And here with all my kids, I need this thing to cure as fast as possible before they start spilling everything on it. So I'm definitely using the accelerator. Now what you're gonna do is just pour a little puddle on there and a little bit goes a long way as you can see. I'm not pouring any additional finish onto this table. I'm just taking a credit card because I forgot to grab a squeegee from the shop. And I'm going back and forth, back and forth, just slowly dragging it down, trying to get that finish inside of all the grain. And I'm just gonna go to town. This process takes a couple minutes and it's also only one coat. You don't need to apply any additional coat. This is a white oak table. It adheres to everything. So what's great about this finish is that it molecularly bonds to the fibers in the wood so if you try to put on a second coat, there's no fibers exposed, so it's not adhering to anything. So if the wood table is expanding and contracting, you're not going to get any splitting in the finish or any cracking in the finish because it's bonding to the fibers. Also, it's a great solution to those water rings that you're used to seeing in finish that you say, put a coaster, put a coaster, because what causes that is a little tip, a little secret for you guys, is that traditional varnish that you get at your general's box store furniture store is covered in this plasticky film finish and you don't want to cut into that you don't want any of that getting in your food this is a food safe finish and when you get a cold drink on a hot summer day you're changing the seasonal movement in the wood and your traditional finish is designed to only expand and contract with natural seasonal movement but when you put a cold drink there you yourself are changing the seasonal movement so that wood wants to separate, that wood wants to move, and the finish is not letting it because it's not natural. So then the wood separates itself from the finish and you get this white ring, which is air underneath the finish, a separation between wood and varnish. And this being bonding to fibers, if those fibers move, the finish moves. And so you're not going to get any separation between finish and wood. How awesome is that? So now I'm gonna take a nice dry rag and I'm gonna buff this thing. I'm gonna wipe off as much excess as I can. I know usually you're used to thinking, no, let it sit and dry, but you got 50 minutes to wipe off everything you can because after 50 minutes, this finish can start to get sticky and becomes a pain to scrub off. So you just take a dry rag and keep buffing. Usually what I like to do is after my first rag is buffed, I go and get a second one and make sure that everything is buffed off so that there's no residue left on my rag. And that's it, there you go. Just like that, I have a new table. If you guys are interested, maybe in the next video, I can show you how to spot fix with this finish. Let me know.